So, I was sent something very interesting. Um, and I'm going to sort of pseudo-react live uh, because I, I sort of skimmed it and I already am seething with anger. If you needed today's reason to believe that we are ruled by evil people, truly evil people, I've got everything you need. Because the United Nations put out an article called The Benefits of World Hunger. The author is George Kent a professor in the Department of Political Science at the University of Hawaii. He works on human rights, international relations, peace, development, and environmental issues, with a special focus on nutrition and children. He has written several books. The latest is Freedom from Want, the Human Right to Adequate Food. So, he writes this article here. The Benefits of World Hunger. That seems kind of like fucking counter to everything he was saying. Um, so, uh, the article could be just... A uh, little bit of irony, you know? It could be just, aw shucks, we tried to do a funny and you heckin' didn't have a sense of humor about it. But, um, given the fact that world hunger is, like, really bad still, even though the UN has existed for a really long time, uh, you could just take this article at face value because... They're not doing anything about it uh, in any real or meaningful sense. So, without further ado, let's read this article. The Benefits of World Hunger. I have it pulled up in an archive because they deleted it. I wonder why they would delete an article that's so good, you know? That, that makes them look like such angelic saint heroes. But let's just, you know, get out of the way that I'm biased as somebody who basically just bought $15 worth of food that has to last me the next week. Um, you know, maybe we shouldn't be writing articles about why Hunger is good. Uh, you know, I feel like this article is incredibly out of touch. And, and let's get into why. By just starting reading. We sometimes talk about hunger in the world as if it were a scourge that all of us want to see abolished, viewing it as, a com as comparable with the plague of AIDS. With, with the plague or AIDS, but that naive view prevents us from coming to grips with what causes and sustains hunger. Hunger has great positive value to many people. Indeed, it's fundamental to the working of the world's economy. Hungry people are the most productive people, especially where there's a need for manual labor. Because, you know, I could maybe understand saying this is ironic if the UN didn't enable countries who did this. But they fucking do. Um, and, and the fact that they published an article that basically just says, Ah, yeah, this is what we do. This is what we do. And we're awesome anyway. Um, so... We in developed countries sometimes see poor people by the roadside holding up signs saying we'll work for food. Actually, most people work for food. 
It's mainly because people need food to survive that they work so hard, either in producing food for themselves in subsistence level production, or by selling their services to others in exchange for money. How many of us would sell our services if it were not for the threat of hunger? More importantly, how many of us would sell our services so cheaply if not for the threat of hunger? When we sell our services cheaply, we enrich others, those who own the factories, the machines, and the lands, and ultimately own the people who work for them. For those who depend on the availability of cheap labor, hunger is the foundation of their wealth. You feeling the irony yet? The irony? The irony? They're totes joking. It's not like the UN enables this shit. Nah! The UN doesn't enable this shit. The UN isn't a key driving factor behind the status quo, is it? Nah! This guy's totally joking. People just didn't get it. That's why they had to delete it. The conventional thinking is that hunger is caused by low-paying jobs. For example, an article reports on Brazil's ethanol slaves, 200,000 migrant sugar cutters who prop up renewable energy boom. So, they're just admitting now that the UN's green agenda that they have for things like Agenda 2030 and their sustainability blah blah is going to rely on shit like this. And it needs you to be hungry in order to be weak enough to sell your labor for cheap enough that you'll be, you know, one of the people that they can use for shit like this. While it is true that hunger is caused by low-paying jobs, we need to understand that hunger at the same time causes low-paying jobs to be created. Who would have established massive biofuel production operations in Brazil if they didn't know that there were thousands of hungry people desperate enough to take the awful jobs they would offer? Who would build any sort of factory if they did not know that many people would be available to take the jobs at low Pay rates. Keep in mind, it's only ironic if they don't do it. You know, the UN is the primary institution driving globalist policy. So, this institution driving globalist policy, they really want these people to be hungry. And it's not fucking irony. So they're just bragging about being evil. Much of the hunger literature talks about how it's important to assure that people are well fed so they can be more productive. That is nonsense. No one works harder than hungry people. Yes, people who are well nourished have greater capacity for productive physical activity, but well nourished people are far less willing to do that work. You need to starve people in order to enslave them. But we're being ironic. You see where I'm coming from here? <laughs> and like, they're using this. The fucking Agenda 2030 shit. The Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. All of that shit. Uh, we went over that on Agris Nexus podcast. Uh, I, I was guesting, and we went over Agenda 2030 and their sustainable development goals. So let's be super clear here and say um, that the, the, the people in charge here, they're not joking. And they're writing this. I mean, maybe this guy is. Maybe he's just being totes ironics. But you know what? Um, the place he wrote it for is all too happy to unironically take this as just like an instruction manual.
Like, this is insane, yo. The non-governmental organization Free the Slaves defines slaves as people who are not allowed to walk away from their jobs. It estimates that there are about 27 million slaves in the world, including those who are literally locked into workrooms and held as bonded laborers in South Asia. However, they do not include people who might be described as slaves to hunger, that is, those who are free to walk away from their jobs but have nothing better to go to. Maybe most people who work are slaves to hunger? <gasps> but it's a benefit, right? And he's totally being ironic, right? Which is why the UN and uh, UN nations have outlawed this sort of thing, just like they've outlawed a variety of other things, right? Mmm, no! Which is why they've uh, rejected the the biofuel that came from these slaves? No! Which is why they've uh, rejected fuel from Brazil in general, um, even though they've demanded a certain amount of ethanol in people's fuel mix. No! No! They're not going to because they're massively evil hypocrites! <laughs> For those of us at the high end of the... This is real, real evil territory here. For those of us at the high end of the social ladder, ending hunger globally would be a disaster. If there were no hunger in the world, who would plow the fields? Who would harvest our vegetables? Who would work in the rendering plants? Who would clean our toilets? We would have to produce our own food and clean our own toilets. No wonder people at the high end are not rushing to solve the hunger problem. For many of us, hunger is not a problem, but an asset. Yeah. They're joking. This piece was written in irony, and this piece was written in order to jar people to alertness. And that's why the UN does so fucking much. That's why this article's been here for like a year. And so much has been done to stop world hunger um, and, you know, outlaw the institutions responsible for this, right? And not encourage them by, um, by, by fucking forcing the world onto a more ethanol-based uh, fuel mix because... Biden wants to uh, get away from oil um, and Biden wants to uh, move on to things that basically paid his campaign. No, nah, no. OK, all of that was just an insane, insane and um, untrue and completely unverifiable conspiracy theory. Uh, it's not like the massive amount of government spending can always be traced back to the primary campaign finance source uh, that a country, uh, a country's leadership gets, right? It's not like the, uh, you know, Biden campaign was hugely funded by the military industrial complex and uh, big pharma and that's why there's been a huge amount of money going to the military industrial complex and big pharma to the tunes of tens of billions of dollars that could have gone to, you know, dealing with the homelessness problem, which has been estimated at $20 billion a year. Not that that could just be added to the budget and maybe we could just subtract the strategic weapons stockpile for places like Israel and not help Ukraine build an iron dome for their uh, 5G dystopia. Um, you know, no, we can't do that. We can't feed the hunger uh, problem here. We can't fix the hunger problem anywhere because it's a benefit and an asset and these people aren't joking. Even if George Kent is joking, even if this author was being totes tongue and chicos about it, maybe the rest of them aren't, 
And that's why this problem exists to begin with, even though the UN exists. Even though this guy is all about peace and human rights. Where are those? They don't exist. For real. Like, they, they, they want you to believe that they're on your side. And then they just write transparent manuals for what they're actually doing. Like, it, it, it would be funny, maybe, if the UN was actually stopping these problems and wasn't enabling the people who, you know, cause them and benefit from them. But they are enabling the people who cause them and benefit from them, and they aren't stopping them. So how can we assume that this is anything other than serious? And why should we take their benefit of the doubt? Why should we give them any sort of fucking leeway in this regard? Maybe we fucking shouldn't. And maybe we should let their actions speak louder than their words, like they already do. And accept that these people want you poor, want you hungry, want you to own nothing and be happy. Want you to be faced with the prospect of eviction in a week, like I am. Because you can't make ends meet without selling your soul to the machine. It's a good thing. UN says so. Right? Maybe we shouldn't be listening to evil people for our advice on human rights and peace and shit, maybe we should be getting on a new paradigm that doesn't involve the same entrenched group of establishmentarians that have created these problems to begin with. Maybe the anarchy that they've indoctrinated you to believe is going to lead to complete chaos and destruction of everything as we know it. Is really just a projection of the mutually assured destruction of nuclear powers that are totally okay with taunting each other like the US, Russia, and China do. And maybe this system exists this way for a fucking reason. And it's not because of fucking anarchists. Wow. Man, you know, if that blew your mind, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And, uh, yeah smash the fucking state.